Okay, so over the last uh, few days, I've been shooting with the Fuji XE1 alongside the Fuji XE2, and I've been just doing the usual kind of family stuff over Easter. But then I decided to do a proper comparison where I kind of imagined that I was at a food shoot. I do a lot of food photography for all kinds of um, clients, um, from whiskey companies through to restaurants, through to chefs in London, all kinds of different food. So I just set up a very basic Easter table, um, straight down and, and, and one to the side, and just really just shooting with the same lens on both cameras, just to really see how they both um, behaved in that kind of setting. I was imagining that I was at you know, a proper shoot, so I've basically used a, the 18 millimeter lens shooting down from a, a kind of a flat lay um, of a cup of coffee with some kind of um, bits and pieces in it. And f5.6, ISO 400, it's what I would very, very kind of regularly do at a food shoot. And just to see what each different Fujifilm simulation would look like um, for both sensors, showing out the um, X-Trans 1 to X-Trans 2. And then I changed over to the 56 millimeter lens, which is the 85, which I use a lot in food photography, just to see what I would get and to see how it compares between the X-Trans 1 and X-Trans 2. And I'm actually quite fascinated by the results. Now they're both very similar, so there are there are circumstances where they look um, very similar, especially with like the classic neg um, simulations. But there are times where the X Trans Two sensor looks a bit sharper than the X Trans One, and this, especially with the fifty six mil, it kind of um, there was kind of almost like more room for light to come in. It's weird. I don't know what it was because um, they're the same lighting conditions, same ISO, same white balance, everything the same. Um, but it was just one of those things that you can just see really clearly how one sensor is just a little bit sharper than the other. And I, I kind of feel like what I like about it is it's almost like what, if I would go to say an old film camera and I would say, right, today I want to shoot um, something with a little bit more sharpness, with a little bit more kind of clarity, but still looking a bit, you know, filmish. I would go to, you know, whatever you would pick, maybe a portrait or something. And then you would say, actually, today I want to go for something really much more old, you know, old looking. And you choose another film. And I feel like with the XE1, you can go to that and say, right, I want today to look really filmic. I'm going to go back and it's just going to all look... Uh, less sharp, it's going to just have that kind of really gorgeous tones to it, which are quite exciting. And then you can say, actually, I'm now going to go to the X-Trans 2 and use the XE2 and it's going to be a little bit sharper, but it's still going to keep 
that real nostalgic feel to it, but at the same time could use it commercially um, for a food shoot. So it's a really interesting situation now for me because I've really enjoyed using both and I can see the benefits of both. Now, another thing to notice is that when I was out shooting the XC1 the other day um, on the beach, the dynamic range of the XC1 really surprised me. It had a fantastic dynamic range. I did um, a shot that I'm gonna show you now on the beach where I really have like, I've been stretching these shadows on purpose just to see how much they would give. And I was amazed at how clean the image looks, even with the shadows pulled out and um, just totally amazed at how, how amazing the uh, quality of that dynamic range is on the XE1. So we've got this situation where the XE1, XE2 both look absolutely fantastic. Really, really happy with both. I would use both commercially, to be honest. Um, if I was gonna choose a camera, it's really interesting because I think once you've used the camera for a while, I kind of feel like what happens is, is that you just get used to it and therefore you learn where buttons and dials are. And so it becomes less of a kind of um, faff to find your way around. But, so there are times when the XE2 is a bit easier to use because I think that I'm, I've customized it all and I can just get around it easily. Um, but I don't really have a preference if I'm really honest. I think there are times that the XE2 will be a bit easier to use, perhaps, but only marginally. And I, to be honest, I can't choose. I love them both for different reasons. Like I said, it's like using different film. And so there are days that I'll shoot the XE1, there are days that I'll shoot the XE2. It's like having a, a palette of colors in your, in your camera bag. And you say, today I'm gonna to use this palette, I'm gonna use this color, and I'm gonna mix this color. I can see in my head um, so many amazing landscape photos that I'm gonna shoot with the XE1 because I can just see in my head how they're gonna look and how, what I'm gonna to do to that image to kind of make it how I want it. I can see that it's like having a, a new set of paints in my, in my bag with this one. And then with this one, I can see, again, a different set of colors. So I'm just really excited by the fact that this has given me a whole kind of new palette of color um, to add to my camera bag. And in fact, I've started selling my analog cameras because I'm that confident in the filmic look of these two cameras. So anyway, I'm gonna show you now um, a slideshow of a bunch of photos taken with both cameras to give you um, real comparison and just a, an idea of how these sensors look. But if you are in the market for either the XE1 or the XE2, I would say they are both absolutely brilliant cameras and will give you fantastic results. I've been impressed with the dynamic range. I've been impressed with everything about them, really. Um, so anyway, here we go. Lovely filmic looks. And uh, yeah, I'll see you soon. Cheers.